Good morning. This is Senate Judiciary. This is Friday, April 30th, 2021. And I will announce publicly that this is the last formal meeting of the committee, although we may meet um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays from 8.30 to 10, depending upon the workload. And I expect that we'll be meeting next Thursday and Friday to go over house changes to um, S3 and perhaps S7. Um, and that S3 is the uh, competency bill um, and S7 is the expungement. Those are rather extensive changes. And then I, I just heard yesterday that the House voted on S99, the bill that uh, would allow for civil suits um, where there's been child physical abuse to eliminate the statute of limitations. And they voted it out without, or they voted, the House voted to support it without any amendments. So that's good news, I think, for the victims, particularly at St. Joseph's Orphanage and Kern Atten School. That's my update. Um, is there a motion to report uh, favorably on the nomination of Don Ellis as a member of the Human Rights Commission? Senator Baruth has moved that we uh, report favorably uh, on Ellis. Are there any, is there any discussion? I think she'll be great. Only I to think... say, as a past member of the Human Rights Commission, <laughs> I envy you because that was one of my favorite places to be where you could sit all of your politics outside the front door when you went in and engage in conversations that were incredibly deep and wonderful to be able to beat around the table without feeling like the press was looking down your neck at the same time. Have fun with it and my best and Hope you keep the tradition going. I think you'll do a nice job, Dawn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't, we do have to formally vote, although three members of four members have already signaled. I'm going to hold my cards close to my vest <laughs> until I'm asked for a vote. Peggy, could you please call the vote? Do we Senator need, a, Bruce, do we need huh? a second or not? No. No, I don't think so. Okay. Peggy, Senator Benning. Me. Yes. Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Win. I'm honored. Thank you. It's an important time for the work that we all do. And it I'm certainly is. Um, you Thank know, you. obviously, there was just a settlement in the Kayamura case in Bennington and, and raised a lot of interest in that. Settlement came through the Human Rights Commission mediation, as I understand. Yes, that's part of, um, uh, spent some time with them uh, a few years back, making sure that we understood the principles of restorative justice and looking at some of the um, world examples of that to see if there are things that we could bring into our work. And one thing we brought in is really a tremendous push on the conciliation piece. Can we, can we find a pathway forward that works for the, the, the various parties when there's harm or when harm hasn't been found. And so making sure that we have that in our toolkit and we use it um, and, and seriously think about um, how we can use that as well as the judiciary um, straight through the judiciary path. All right, we're gonna shift Thank gears you. to H225 uh, and act relating to uh, prosecution uh, a possession of therapeutic dosage of buprenorphine. I will leave you. Um, thank you very much, oh, everyone. Thank you, Don. Bye-bye. Um, we all heard some interesting discussion <clears throat> in the joint hearing yesterday. Um, Michelle isn't here yet, so. so you should be here in a minute, a couple minutes. Phillip, but I wanted to. Is Philip in order for Don? Huh? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm happy to report it. But good, since you know her. Um, yep. Philip, very good. So you'll let them know, Senator Baruth? Uh, I'll do that right now. Okay. I don't think I need to do anything. I think you just need to let them know and the vote. Oh, do we have to give yeah. them the uh, nomination paper? I think no? so. Well, I don't, I don't think so. 
I don't okay. Know. I'll, I I'll, have it if you need it, though. All right, I'll write to Bloomer right now. Okay. Um, I've, I've been, I was actually surprised at some of the testimony. <clears throat> I was particularly um, struck by the testimony from um, the three states attorneys, and I know they're not uh, always on the same page. There's 14, you know, we talked a lot about 14 different systems of justice, but all are fairly consistent that they're not prosecuting possession of small amounts. Uh, and unless there's a case where they're uh, that might, you know, there are a lot of other drugs around and that sort of thing. Uh, I was also, uh, so in a sense, it's already been decriminalized uh, just by have it. I, um, I don't know that there's been any prosecution of small amounts. I'm, but I am kind of concerned that um, the uh, the word decriminalize in the intent section of the House passed bill seems to indicate that they're, what they're doing is decriminalizing. Uh, but then if you read it, if you're over, if you're 21 years of age or over, it's actually legalized, the possession. So that bothers me a little bit. Um, and I would um, can we change the intent? Oh, yeah, sure. We can rewrite the bill. We can do it anyway. Um, assuming we get the bill, then rules can be still. That's right. So may I make a comment here? Sure. So uh, I... I know that um, there is some concern about the way it's drafted and stuff, but, and that they aren't really, that most of them aren't prosecuting, but I think that there was ample testimony about um, people's fear um, about having it because, I mean, not even going to hospitals or places because of fear of uh, stigmatism, job loss, all kinds of things. And and so if it, if it continues to be illegal and just not prosecuted, that, that doesn't uh, alleviate those fears. And the other thing I, I do have to say is I was stunned by uh, Dr. Levine's testimony that if he were in any other state, he would support this bill, but that we don't need it in Vermont because we have no waiting lists and the capacity to treat all. And that simply is not true. I, I mean, we heard from the, the woman, um, I can't remember where she was from, that works for the Turning Point, and who said that she, she has people that are put on waiting lists. And we actually had a death here in Brattleboro, I think, I think it was last yesterday or the day before. And we do, we have waiting lists. And I just I think cannot. She was I, from Bennington, and she testified that between 4 p.m. on Friday and 8 or 9 a.m. on Monday, you can't even get through. Right. And I can tell you that when AHS closed down the units and the services at the retreat, and they partially reopened them, and he, he said that they had other providers who were um, willing to step up and work with them. But I can tell you that something as simple as getting an appointment with a LADAC was six weeks. So that I, What's a I LADAC. I'm sorry. Uh, licensed alcohol and drug counsel. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good morning, sorry. Michelle. Good morning. Senator Baruth. I just wanted to second what Senator White said. I I found that 
uh, I thought at first maybe he had been misquoted, but then he repeated it with the explanation. And, you know, to say that any policy would be good public policy in 49 states, but bad in one, um, it, it, it just goes down this path to a certain kind of nonsense. Um, and, you know, the explanation was that you had instant access here and no waiting. And, you know, no one has ever testified that there's zero wait times that, that I remember. Um, so, you know, I, I also thought that the bulk of his argument against the bill or reasons to be cautious about the bill would apply in other states, um, you know, having to do with you know the um, you know the fact that the that the drug is somewhat addictive does produce some sort of high those sorts of things wouldn't change regardless of state so it just kept leading me back to the the strange quality of that statement about any other state this would be good public policy so I I, uh, I also think Dr Levine has done yeoman's work during the pandemic I came in willing to give him all, all sorts of respect for his opinion, but I, I, I was very taken aback by that, I have to say. Well, would we be able to have a section uh, with a report back on issues of treatment availability? And you may need help from Katie to draft this and might go to the health and welfare committee to look at, but I think it would help be helpful to have a section on uh, the status of treatment um, and wait times to get treat to get into treatment in Vermont in various geographical specifically various geographical locations. The discussion yesterday about um, not ha having uh, methadone available in Bennington County. Um, the discussion. I'm sure in the kingdom you have the mobile um, system still. I think, but. The idea that there's treatment on demand and then you hear from the Turning Point Club in Bennington that um, if somebody comes to them at 5 p.m. on Friday night, there's no way to get any treatment. Uh, you get to see it unless it's emergency room, I guess. And obviously, they do need the signs and the papers. So I don't know if we could write something in about that. Senator Nick. I have to admit, when we hear from state's attorney and direct quote from the Addison County state's attorney that says, this drug saves lives. And there are so many people, and I mean, certainly I know several people who have died this year. And it's like, I mean, I don't know them well, but I know their parents. And uh, if there's something that can be done to save lives this year, we should do this. And yes, it needs some fine tuning, but we should do it. May I ask how what the vote was in the house 145 or, or no i think it was a, it was a voice vote wasn't it i i don't remember i i'll i'll go and take a look i think it was a, a roll call i think there were like 17 no's something like that it's pretty overwhelmingly it, it was i think it i think you're right it was like 17 or 19 it was yeah. it was all number of no's. I was pretty, uh, it was a, it was interesting. So many people explained their votes and like people were breaking down, crying, talking about like <laughs> Carolyn Partridge was like, this vote is for my niece. I guess she lost her niece died of an overdose last year. And um, it was, it was, it was clearly one of those things where it's touched so many people in a personal way. Um, so it was, it was, a, it was a big vote. Well, I don't, uh, I'm going to uh, say something that'll probably get me in trouble, but um, I don't think there are any um, easy answers to getting out of this problem. Yeah. And I don't have a great deal of confidence. This is a huge difference. But as Senator Nick had just said, if it does save one or two lives, it's well worth it. But um, to, to try to believe that this is going to change things dramatically. I, I just got a note that it was 126. Uh, there were 19 nays, according to yeah. Peggy, just chat. Uh, 126. Senator Benning. Yep, Senator Benning. 
Yeah, I would like to say a couple of things. First off, I have great faith in Dr. Levine and everything that he has done during this pandemic. Um, I am also a criminal defense attorney, however, and I have been in many situations very recently where people have tried to get in for treatment and we've had a delayed wait to get in. And there are occasions when we have a bed available and the judicial uh, ability to respond to getting, for instance, a change of plea scheduled has knocked that back because we couldn't coordinate the court's schedule with the bed space availability at a given locale. So it is, uh, it's a frustrating thing to see. I am curious, though, about the thought of a sunset provision on here that might allay a lot of fears, um, even if it was an extended one, uh, to give a, a time period for a track record of how this change um, works. And if it is successful, obviously we remove the sunset, but to those who are cautious, um, it would give them the sense that, okay, this is a test we're doing and uh, perhaps bring more support for the change. No. Senator Sears. Yep. <laughs> we're both have our hands up. Oh, I'm sorry. I was writing, I was redrafting the bill. I'm Go sorry. Ahead, <laughs> Go ahead. My, my preference at this late date is to just pass it the way it is. Um, I think that there are studies out there already um, in the health department that uh, look at beds available and waiting times and stuff. I don't think we need to add that. And I think that even if, if we need to allay fears, it seems to be there are few fears that need to be allayed because 130 people voted for this. So that means there were 19 people who had fears. And in this, I don't know what it would be in the Senate, but if the proportions are the same, um, that's, it, it, it seems to me that I, my preference is to pass it just as it is and to get it done and get it over with instead of sending it off to um, a conference committee and running the risk that it doesn't happen this year. Well, I want to just dovetail off of you, Jeanette, and say there's only one vote with some fear attached to it that might be standing in the way. And in order to try to allay the fears that were presented from that one votes camp, um, it would be an idea that I think would smooth some ruffled feathers and take care of concerns to demonstrate that it's not gonna be the disaster that was predicted. Okay. Got it. Um, I think a lot change in two years. If you don't feel there's need for a report, I, um, in this bill, I'm fine with that. But um, I would like to uh, suggest that I think we should make changes to it. And I do support a, a sunset of one or two years. And I also think that in line one and the intent section, um, it should read, we should cross out the word criminalize, decriminalize. So it would read, remove criminal penalties for possession of two to four milligrams or less of new form. So that's basically what it does. And then if you're over 20, if you're under 21, you would be a civil matter if I read this, and then, um, because um, you see, when we decriminalize marijuana, I'm troubled by the wording decriminalize because that's not what it does. Why don't we just leave out the intent and just pass the bill? <laughs> well. No, I think it's important to have that intent okay. there. I think it's helpful to explain it, Senator White, because of the way that the criminal law is just uh, organized. I think you want to make it clear to people that, um, you know, so for the 
under the hundred bench, hundred times the benchmark right now is a misdemeanor, and this is just taking a fraction of that misdemeanor crime and removing the penalties. So the there still is a, a, a pretty big range. So from like two hundred, you know, over two hundred twenty-four to thirty-six hundred kilograms is still going to be a misdemeanor. So okay, I think it's. I think it's helpful as like a reader assist, but, okay. but Senator Sears, can I just ask you to say that I just popped up my, um, oh, I'm sorry, my version. Um, I'm sorry. You said to just, um, just say, yeah, basically in line, that it's I don't have penalties. line numbers, but it is the intent of the general assembly to remove criminal penalties for possession of 224 milligrams or less of buprenorphine. simply okay. striking out the word decriminalized. Sure. Senator Bruce. Uh, I just wanted to go back to the sunset question. Um, my preference, and I guess I'm, I'm picking up some of the urgency that I hear in Alice, uh, in Alice's voice. Um, I think we should do this, and I would prefer to do it as it came out of the House. If if that isn't possible, if we don't have the votes to get it out of committee that way. I would support a, a sunset, but I would prefer uh, that a one-year sunset just seems to me a, a, a sort of foregone conclusion. You won't, you won't have any real evidence after a year. So, so if there does have to be a sunset, I would hope that it would be more like two or three years because that would allow you to really see what the policy is doing. Um, so that's, that's that question. Okay. Mike Sherling's here. I, Mike? Did you want to comment, uh, Commissioner Shirley? Did you want to comment on any of the discussion? Uh, no, Senator. I was. Uh, I appreciate being acknowledged. I was uh, here at your request in the event um, I, there were questions. I'm. I'm willing to go to two years, um, but I do think I need to. I do think we. I'm not afraid of changing language, but that's what we do, and I. I'm really troubled by, um, it struck me when I first read the bill. <clears throat> so that, that's my simple. We could do, um, we don't need to, you know, I, I think a two year sunset is fine. <clears throat> it gives the state time. I mean, I don't know how the, you know, let's, I believe that our Medicaid spends $14 million a year on spots. <clears throat> just as a point of interest. De yeah. May I just make a comment on that? That it um, it is interesting and not Medicaid spending, but um, the way we use it in our prisons. And it, um, it was meant to treat people who were already being treated with the MAT yeah. program. And I have had anecdotal information that many of the people in prison just start getting the MAT treatment because, because it's there and because it's available and because they can have it. And so they come out um, addicted when they didn't, that, when they went in. And that, that was a concern expressed by Commissioner Levine that I think is a general concern that might end up with people who are, um, I can't remember the exact wording. But that's in our prison system, that's us. Yeah, but I, I, I think, it, uh, I'm trying to think back to Commissioner Levine's testimony about the unintended consequences. Senator, uh, Senator Booth. I was just thinking back to our visit to the correctional facility we did have that drug counselor who was also a, a, an inmate um, who said that he thought that sometimes people entered the MAT program because once they did, they couldn't be moved out of state. Um, and yeah. that's, that's stuck with me too. Mm -mm. I, mean, um, I just want to, um, in the drug treatment world, there are a lot of disagreement about 
using medically assisted treatment. Um, it's becoming less and less now, but there are treatment programs that do not allow medically assisted treatment. So there is a legitimate argument uh, that you know, you're not um, trading one drug for another. And I understand all of it, and I don't buy that. I've always believed, uh, not always. Back in sometime when, when Howard Dean was governor, there was a proposal in the Senate to uh, allow methadone in Vermont. He strongly opposed it, presented not for a while. And I got convinced by Jim Letty that it was probably a positive thing. Um, and he, he was chair of health and welfare. Then. So, you know, it, but it, there is that disagreement in the medical community about whether or not medically assisted treatment is a good thing. He also hated chiropractors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he almost became president. Well, I don't know if I'd say that. Well. He almost got the nomination, let's put it. He almost got the nomination. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Senator. Hey, boy. I think you should do a book on Howard. Actually, I covered that incident in my Leahy book. That's true. Yes, you do. Um, any other discussion on the bill? Can I just get a clarification? Yep. Or, or, or are we not doing markup right now? I guess I was just wondering. We are doing markup, but we're not going to take a final vote. And the markup would be... Um, I already change. got the change in the intent and then just do a two year two year sunset. Uh, sunset. 20, July one. When does this become effective as a passage? Uh July first. Well then like it. I don't know why you wouldn't do it on passage. You can do it on passage. I think it's just a you know a default that we usually do. But yeah, there's no it because it's a a a benefit, you know, to people rather than it imposing, like us times when you create new crimes, you want to yeah. give some notice. Yeah. I think right. if you're taking but, this away, you can do it on passage. Well, given the testimony of the three states attorneys, it's unlikely somebody's going to get charged between now and July 1. But if somebody were charged. Flip side of that is to say that we are actually trying to save lives as quickly as possible. So there's no reason to have a, a date that's arbitrary. You make it upon passage. Yep. And then, then the sun sets July 1, 2023. And I've got to go get Marley. I'll be right back. Where is he outside? No, I am going yeah. absolutely crazy. I, I can't even, I don't know. I, this, doing things this way is just, is making me crazy. Yeah. It is making me crazy and I can't, I can't find anything. I keep get printing off the wrong things. I have to run downstairs. To get the print. I'm just, and I, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, but Peggy. I had soft boiled eggs for breakfast. So it made me feel a little better. Hey, Peggy. Is that, what's that like? Hey, Siri. No. Yes, Peggy, yes. you got your dog over your shoulder? I do. Check oh, that out. Oh, how cute. I know it's finally settled of... down. I don't know if you guys saw the, the strings from the windowsill were being batted back and forth. but Well, and Michelle's cat was going wild there. Now, now it's sleeping, but. Napping now. Cat probably heard Marley. Thought Marley was after the cat. <laughs> I finally caught the chipmunk after three weeks. Oh so, no. Two days ago. <laughs> Poor chipmunk. He Marley's was okay. Not... No, no, no. I caught it. I live trapped him. And then I oh, gave him oh. back and I, I let him back go. Oh, wall. Marley's been chasing chipmunks for five years and he hasn't caught one yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cats, I don't know, you know, this, I, I was living yeah. with one because the cat brought it live to me and dropped it at my feet. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so where are we? So I think you have, so you have three amendments. One is the uh, replacement of decrim with running around removal of penalties, then a, a two-year sunset and effective on passage. And I can... Right. 
um, knock that out quickly this morning and send it through editing and, and get it to y'all and, and just so that you can vote whenever. Well, you what I would like to do is get it to health and welfare and Representative Ballant and have Representative <laughs> pro tem for Ballant um, so that uh, she's aware of it and then we can get it out of rules early next week and um, if health and welfare has any changes they want to make. Yeah. Okay, I'll send it out to everybody uh, today. Well, is everybody tentatively okay with this? We're not going to do a final vote because we don't have the bill. Yep. 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 And hopefully the rules committee will be willing to um, deal with it. Okay. We were scheduled to start on um, H, uh, H183 at 1015. I don't know if we can get um, Dick, remember we have uh, appropriations. Yeah, I know. That's why I was hoping we could get started early on um, 183. Yeah. What, yeah. what is 183 again? That's the bill on consent. And Michelle is the drafts oh. person, which is helpful to have you. Um, but we could, we're not going to do S3. I wrote uh, Eric because we have appropriations. Um, if Peggy can email the folks who are going to come in on 183, if they could join us early, that would actually work better for me because H18 is up on the House floor this morning a, oh, little, okay. a little later. And um, because it has S103 on it, and it, um, it would be good if I could, so I could be in the Zoom room just in case there's questions. So nope. if you want to do 183, I'm ready. Why and don't I we take a, um, a five minute break? Yep. And I'll see if everybody. we can get others, and then we'll come back to the amendment anyway, and then people can comment on that when we're working on the amendment. So hopefully yep. we can get back at 10 past.